Hacksaw Ridge. Saw this movie for the first time this week. Hacksaw Ridge. And was pleasantly surprised at how much Initial I enjoyed thoughts. it. Initial thoughts. Was pleasantly surprised about how much that I enjoyed it. That is a big surprise. Yeah, <laughs> that is a big surprise to me. Um, I went into it kind of expecting it not to be great because it was so yep. uh, hyped up and like people love this movie. And a lot of what I heard about it was that it's just ultra violent and that it's just, you know, intense violence all the time. But I, I don't know how you felt, but I didn't really find it that violent. Um, so I just watched it today for the second time. And it's funny because the first time watching it through, I didn't remember it being very violent. And then watching it this time, I was like, oh, this is a lot more violent than I remember. But not nothing too crazy. Nothing, nothing out of the realm of a war movie. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, it's definitely it, violent, it's, right? Like people have like body parts blown off and all this different stuff. But it it just felt very much like a war movie in that aspect. Yeah, it didn't stand yeah. out. Like it, it's not like if someone asked right. me about it, what I thought the violence of it would not be would never even cross my mind to to bring up. Because if you're gonna go see a war movie, then no, no, yeah, it's gonna be violent. Like that's that's like the baseline you, have to you expect should expect. That, yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think of this movie? Uh, I love this movie. I thought it's good. Um, like I said, watched it again for the second time, and it held up. So I think that pretty much makes it a great movie. Because <laughs> I because you, you like it. As long as it holds up for two views by Taylor, and I still like it. Then yes, it's a decent. Then it's certified fresh. Um, yeah, I, I I I do enjoy this movie. Cool. So I would what uh, I would say it. that it is. I'd probably give this one like an eight out of ten. Uh, I think the story is great. And um. The guy yes. is really inspiring. Like everything he did was so impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, uh, even to the point where it's almost not believable. You know, like obviously they are yeah. going to dramatize stuff, but it makes you question like, well, how much of this is accurate and how much of this is the movie trying to make you side with this guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so if it is accurate, yeah, that dude is um, yeah, it, it, crazy. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it, he saved 75 guys and that's, I think, on record. Like, that's not dramatized at all. So that by itself. No, amazing. that's real. Yeah. My, what I'm saying I'd is. S- I'd say most, most of it probably is, is pretty accurate. I mean, the, he won the Medal of Honor. So. Oh, yeah. I, I think the war like stuff. He's... I think that stuff represented him probably exactly. It's everything else that made me kind of question like, Oh, is this when he's like in boot camp and you know, you know, with his girlfriend and wife and like all that extra stuff kind of made me question like, Oh, I wonder how Mm -hmm. close this is to what actually happened. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but that, that, I mean, that's a relatively small thing. It just is like, he's such a good character that it really makes you question like, well, is this, is this true? You know? Cause like uh pursuit of happiness, you really connect with Will Smith, but it kind of turns out that the actual guy is like kind of a dirt bag, like the real life guy, but Will Smith plays him so sympathetic. Oh really? You're, yeah. You like, you're like, man, I, yeah. I want this guy to be my dad, you know? But like, I guess he's, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's just what I heard. You know, like he's, not a great guy yeah. and that the movie kind of did a disservice to, I think his his ex-wife or his wife or whatever, because he was somewhat abusive. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, again, yeah, I'm, oh, yeah. I don't know how accurate any of that is. I could be making everything up, but that's just what I hear. Well, if you read it on the internet it is a hundred percent true. Yep. Um, I, I can, per- I can pretty much confirm that myself. And so I, I, I think, I think the story is amazing and I think it's, it needed to be told and it's great that it was told. I did struggle a little bit with some of the action. 
Um, specifically, there's one scene where they get on top of Hacksaw Ridge, I believe the first time, before anything mm-hmm. pops off. And one of the guys stumbles upon a, 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 what he thought was a dead American soldier and like touches him. And the guy pops up and starts screaming and then gets shot in the yeah. head. And it was like uh-huh. almost comical. You know, like when it happened, it was like, oh, that was, this seems like a joke. Like does not seem, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it was like, I don't know. It, it didn't, it wasn't dramatic. It was more almost funny in, the, in a somewhat tragic way, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Like it just, it didn't really work for me. Well, I don't know. You have you know a very about? strange sense of humor. <laughs> um, I, I know the scene. I wouldn't say that it stood out to me as funny because, like, I'm a human. <laughs> well, you know none of those guys but, in the um, movie die, right? I don't know that. I guess that's true. How am I to know? I do, I, I do agree. This is definitely a story that needs to be told. And I would say that more than likely any person who has received the medal of honor because it's such a prestigious and small community yeah. they probably have a like a great movie yeah, there, yeah. you know like it it's it's you don't they don't just hand these things out it's it's very there's like no choice almost, and and, you and know? about oh, the, yeah. about and, the movie and what being I was telling good. Chris was like yeah exactly what I was telling her was like, this is almost a rare uh, occurrence because most times if someone receives the Medal of Honor, it's because they are dead. Yeah. Or they are not because they're dead, but they, they usually yeah. die. They don't, they normally what don't survive them the Medal of Honor. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- yeah, exactly. Because typically it's, they're some sort of sacrifice, uh, you know, to save others. So this one is pretty rare. Uh, but it's well deserved, you know, assuming it went how they said it did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean. It's, it's, there's something about movies like this, especially, I guess, war movies where you watch a movie as, you know, you watch the movie unfold and then at the end they have like interviews with like the real yeah. people and then they're like old and stuff that it always gets me, especially like with Band yeah. of Brothers. Well, same. Band of Brothers. I don't know Band why. Band of Brothers was so genius the way they did that, where they oh, interview they the guys in the beginning, so perfectly. And you you're watching wow. everything, and you yeah, they you're seeing these guys just tell this story, and you're not connected to the old guys. And then at the end, it's like because it doesn't this guy tell you is this character, about him. this guy is this character, and you're like yeah, your mind is like blown. You're like oh wow, like because you become so connected that to last the episodes, mm-hmm. and yeah. then you. You're somewhat connected to the actual people having them tell the story, but you don't really know who they are. And then in the last episode, you don't, there's no connection until everyone, that last episode. It really it hits so well. Yeah, that was that was genius. You're right. It, that was perfect. Yeah. Um, because you're it, it's it's like a almost like a plot twist. Yeah. With, you know, in not a way, like a yeah. story related plot twist, but. But yeah, it's like, oh, that was this dude this whole time. Yeah. Like that's, I it's 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 really yeah. cool. So yeah, there's always something you know like that 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 gets me. Yeah. So seeing him talk and his brother and his uh, dad too, uh, right? I don't think it was his dad. Oh no, his dad would definitely would probably been dead. I thought it was his brother, time. his dad. His, um, one of the commander. No, it was the, the, yeah, I, I, I want to say it was the Vince Yeah, I think so. Right? But, I mean, I don't know when they filmed all that, cause that guy died in 2006, but the movie came out in 2016, so. Yeah. It was well, filmed a lot earlier, but that guy was born in 1919. Oh, yeah. So his dad was probably born late 1800s, maybe early 1900s, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So he's definitely wasn't around then. Um, that, unless they filmed it like in the eighties, maybe. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I doubt it, but, uh, but I don't think so. The, um, so let's go through the story a little bit. I, it's, I think this will go pretty quick because 
it tells it takes a long time to see the story, but to tell the story, I think is is pretty short. It's uh yes a seven day at, uh, Adventist 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 uh yes. decides he wants to join the army to help fight after the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor, and I it took Correct. me a while to figure out which war this was taking place in. Did you have that issue? Yeah, I saw. Th- no, I, <laughs> I, but I'm, I'm a huge, like, I'm a huge fan of, especially World War II. Yeah. So I, I typically know what war we're in. But they don't, for the most they part. don't, they don't mention it at all, right? They don't mention, mention Pearl Harbor. They don't mention who they're fighting until no. well into the movie. Um, I, f- well, yeah, I don't think so. I think I kind of just can tell from the 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 setting. Yeah, the era. It's like, oh, this is yeah, this is the forties or this is the fifties or you know thirties, yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, so there, it's in World but, War Two. Yeah, he he goes to boot camp, but he is a conscientious objector, right? So he Con- he's conscientious. Adopt, yeah, <laughs> he's willing to be in. I tried to correct you, and I said it wrong. <laughs> I said it right. <laughs> um, well, you you said it weird, and I tried to clear it up, and I said it worse. Constitutions objections. <laughs> um, so he's not willing to kill. Objector. He's not willing to touch a gun, but he's going to be a medic. Is his desire because he wants to? He he has a great point a great line that was something like you know while everyone else is so focused on destroying life i'm gonna try to put some back together if i can or something like that like you know because everyone else is like you you don't win a war because he he tells the commanding officer when they're questioning like why won't you use a gun he's like i'm willing to give up my life for my country and like you don't win a war by giving up your life you the idea is you win by taking life but, um, so everyone thinks he's a coward and, you know, they don't trust them and they're like trying to get him out of boot camp. And so they're like giving them KP duty, making them clean the bathrooms, beating them up, doing all this stuff. Oh yeah. They, yeah. and, uh, he just kind of, you know, pushes his way through all that, uh, um, all those obstacles. He, he doesn't give up on his, uh, principles. ideals. Yeah. Principles. Sure. <laughs> um, even to the point where Which, he was gonna go to prison for him, he yeah he was gonna get court martialed. He he refused to even touch a gun to fire, do the range test, and that I I don't yeah. really I didn't understand this at all. Uh, why couldn't he shoot at paper? Okay, so okay, so this is the part that frustrates me. Or frustrated me both times watching it through because I kind of had forgotten. So his whole thing was he doesn't want to take a life, right? Yeah. But then it, it, but then it, it goes from that into like I'm not even gonna touch a gun so much as to where, hey, you're gonna go to jail if you don't just show them that you can like handle it. You don't have to kill anyone. You don't have to do anything. What is the big deal? I'm like, you're going to go to jail and be able to help no one, which is something that his wife said. You can't help anybody from jail. Yeah. I'm like, dude, just take the gun. You don't got to kill anyone. Get it over with and then go back to doing what you're doing. But then you come to find out the reason he doesn't want to touch a gun is because of what happens with him and his dad. So it's not even necessarily about taking a life. Obviously, he doesn't want to take a life. But he almost like he doesn't trust himself around a gun. He just doesn't want that feeling. He doesn't want that type of thing in his hands anymore. Yeah. Because he almost killed his father yeah. out of anger. I, so that's I, why he won't touch the gun. But we don't know that at the time. We don't know that till the end. I even knowing that at the end, I still have a problem with it. Because like he starts punching a wall at one point when he's locked up. Like he he throws his bed and starts punching a wall and like losing his temper. And to me it's like yeah. Is that any better than shooting a gun at a target? You know, like, why is that so different to the guy? Like, it's, it's destructive 
You know what I mean? Like he's attacking a, an, an inanimate object, but he's not willing to shoot one. Like a gun isn't really that different than, you know, throwing a rock or hitting something with a right. stick if you're not hitting something that's going to die. You know what I mean? Like if, if I went up and punched a tree or I shot a tree, it emotionally, it's, it's pretty much the same thing to me. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I do, but it's obviously it, it wasn't if it was a person destroying something, whether it's paper if or it, a person. If it's, it's a person, I would feel very different. Putting a gun in your hands. Oh, of course. <laughs> if I punched but a person, I shot a person. I wonder. I don't think. Do you think he took issue with ever like touching a rock again after he smashed his brother in the head with one or with a brick? Yeah, I don't know. He, oh, brick. Yeah, that's to right. be consistent. He never touch bricks. <laughs> he could again never too? do that. It would, he would have to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's, he got a lot closer to killing his brother than he did killing his dad. Yeah, well, it depends on how you look at it, but the uh, yeah, okay, no, he, he, yeah, to to be con- to be consistent with that logic, he would have to stay away from bricks too. You know, like just like you're saying, like it that it just doesn't it doesn't track. You know, it's, it seems like a, I and, that, and that's one of the things that I'm like, oh, I wonder what this was really like for him. At the time, like, was he, right. was he really not willing to even touch a gun? Was it that big of a deal to him? Or is this part of the story just to dr- make it more dramatic as they're telling the story? Yeah. I, and we'll never know, but either way, it, it it's cool that he was, you know, wasn't going to cave in to their demands just because he was faced with going to yeah. jail. Like he felt that strongly about it. That he was willing to go to jail. So, hey, you gotta respect that. Nope. I don't have to respect that. Nope. Okay. You don't. You're right. Alan does not care for war veterans. Let that be known. Um, so he, he ends up getting through boot camp and they go to, where are they at? They're in Japan, right? Yeah, they are on Okinawa. And they come to this one ridge that the Japanese are defending really well. Every time they gain a little bit of ground, the Japanese just attack harder and take it right back from the Americans. And they go and they do their first attack and are successful. And then they get overrun Mm -hmm. and the whole company runs back downhill or down the cliff or whatever, down the ridge and leave. I think they said over a hundred soldiers are still on top. Yeah. I think a part of that too, the reason that they, they backed out was one, that there were just a lot of Japanese, but two, they were also, you know, the, the American, our artillery was hitting it and you kind of just need to not be there. Yeah. Yeah. They're bombarding them like, with artillery. So they needed to get away. So yeah. For them to be able to do their job, you kind of got to be out of the way or there's going to be a lot of friendly fire. Um, so yeah, they, they were retreating down the hill and, uh, well, so, hmm, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we talk, you could talk about, all right, I'll let you keep going. <laughs> all right. And so I completely lost my turn. <laughs> Andrew Garfield is the last one to go down. Cause he's, was he trying to help someone at, at that point? Or he was just, he was just in the back. I think he was just, yeah. And he decides like, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to remember what started him off staying up there. Right? Cause it, that was before he started he praying. And, yeah, I think he was just like really deep in. So he would have been one of the last to get out anyways. <clears throat> so there's one scene and I'm trying to remember when it happens in, the movie where he is at the ridge deciding what he's going to do. And he's like praying to God. He's like, God, I don't, I don't understand why you have me here. I don't understand what this is. Why, why would you bring me here for this? And then he hears someone call medic, medic. And he's like, all right, I guess that's what it is. I'm going to, I'm going to trust you. And he runs off and starts saving people. Was that, did that happen right when everyone went down the ridge? Yeah, that was that was pretty much everyone had already gone down, and he was like one of the last guys up there, if not the last guy. Up okay, there. so he wasn't saving people before that point, necessarily. He wasn't he wasn't no. lowering anyone down. That was the start of that. No, he was doing. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was being a medic, but he wasn't wasn't he, he was being super medic. Yeah. And so for the next what probably twenty four hours, I don't I don't know if it's yeah said, I believe it's it's something like that. It's it's definitely overnight. He he's running around this war zone that oh and th- that was another one of the things that kind of stood out. Uh, right when he decides he's going in, he runs into the artillery fire and it's like within feet hitting around him, you know, like within four or five mm-hmm. feet, these shells are like exploding around his feet and stuff while he's running in. Those would kill him. Like that was, uh, yeah, you know, like just the blast would what? destroy him. At least knock yeah. him over and blast him away. The Maybe shrapnel, him the, I don't know. <laughs> it just, that was, uh. I felt like a bit much like it, that, that seemed very unnecessary of a scene because what he was doing was already so impressive that you didn't need to make it look like, well, Oh, he's Superman, yeah. you know, I think part of that would have to be people's uh, general knowledge of how stuff like that works. Right. So if it was going to be super realistic for the, the artillery landing, you know, well, Okay, let me think of how to word this. For for him to be able to run through artillery, like maybe that stuff would probably have to be hitting fifteen to twenty feet away. Yeah, you know, to where he's still able to run. But if you see that on camera, it's not, like doesn't it's, look it's not going to look. It's going to be like, oh well, it's not really that close, anyways. Yeah. It's got it. You know, they have to make it look like he's narrowly avoiding it, which in real life he probably was. Even yeah, being it just wouldn't away, look like it. Yeah, he was really it, close exactly. to danger be- all the time. It just wasn't inches <laughs> away from danger like they've made yes. it look like. Um, which is, again, yeah. it, it's a movie thing. Like, it's not a big deal. It's just one of those, like, small frustrations that I have watching movies, you know? Um, but so yeah, he runs in. Of course. And saves, you know, 70, it, I think he saves over 75, 75 people. He, you know, gets them morphine and, like, takes them over to the ridge and ties them up. And throws him down the ridge, which is like, how tall do you think that ridge was? Like 200 feet? Oh, yeah, probably 200, 250 feet. Um, and so, I mean, it is a ton of work and like his hands are all bloody from lowering the ropes. And so all this stuff is going on. And because these guys are getting saved, they call off the artillery, which makes sense. Which was like, part of their cover. Yeah. So that, oh, yeah. Was, that was what was keeping him safe i mean he was in constant danger of being hit by his own guys but it was keeping the japanese at bay uh but as soon as the artillery stopped the japanese started coming out and killing people who they pushed forward and so now he's like escaping the japanese and still saving all these guys and he uh he just kept praying to god he's like god just help me save one more just one more and just constantly yeah. each each time he would just go back and go back and go back until he finally ends up saving his uh captain was it his captain not his captain it was uh what was Vince Vaughn's I think character he's sergeant sergeant he, he yeah I so Vince so. Vaughn was probably one of the most at least at the beginning against um the Andrew Garfield's character and uh yeah. he ends up saving him last and gets yep. him to safety and they jump down and they get to the bottom of the hill. And, uh, at that point he was like, so they, they come up and then like are trying to pat him on the back and check him out and stuff, you know? And he, he's just like mm-hmm. a rabid dog, you know, he's like spinning around. Yeah. And to me, I know it doesn't make any sense, but I was like, man, he should be done. Like, <laughs> it's like, okay, you did it. Your duty served. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> you for know, sure. like it, it felt like, you went above and beyond your service is like finished. You risked your life so much to save all yeah. these other guys. But the next day they're like, all right, we're going back up. And he's just Go like, right back up. <laughs> and Me- remember everything you just did. You're going to do it again. And so he goes back up and they actually overtake the, the ridge. They get it. But in the, that, during all that, he gets hit with a grenade and gets his leg blown up pretty bad. But they send him off, and he gets to safety. Which I I thought that was a cool scene, though. So it's it's like four Japanese officers, Surrender. right? They are surrendering, 
and but they all have grenades, you know, and they have this somewhat coordinated plan that they're just gonna like one last ditch effort to blow up as many guys as they can. Yeah. So they're all standing there and they all drop their grenade or they all throw their grenades and he like straight swats one out of the air. And kicks the other one. And then kick kicks another one. Um and it I mean it gets just just out of range to probably kill him, but it still, you know, blows him up. And now I, I wonder um, if that's so then, yeah, at that point he's if done. that's what actually happened or not. Yeah, that that part is that it could very well be dra- dramatized. Dra- dramatis- dramatized, dramatized. Uh, because that, I mean, if it did happen, but that's cool, super so impressive. Like uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, but like that's one just one of those things that make it hard to to know how much is actually true. Yeah, it just reminds me of that scene in the when the Punisher's fighting the Russian and he throws a grenade at him and he just bats like, it away. Bats it away. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the guy, so great. Desmond. So we know, so we know it's possible based on the punishment. Is it Desmond? What's his name? Yeah. Desmond, Desmond Doss. Doss ends up getting awarded the medal of honor for courage under fire, which is like Taylor was saying in the beginning. Yes. One of the most prestigious awards you can get in the military. I think it is the most prestigious. Uh, award you can get. I don't think I'm, I'm I th- pretty sure there's not anything higher. I, well, I think it depends on the branch, right? Like, each branch has its know. own top. I think medal, that right? is all encompassing. Is it? Is that just like a, a presidential award type thing? Because it because it's a presidential yeah. medal. Because what's given the um, by, yeah by the president, not by the military? Yeah. The uh, was it the uh, the cross? Which one? What's the the bronze cross? No, that I don't. Know, it doesn't matter. Um. <clears throat> uh. And yeah. So the guy is insane he's like you know a superhero basically and Mm -hmm. he saves so many people's lives and it it's funny in a morbid way but he saves he starts saving japanese soldiers and they're like he's even sending japanese soldiers down and they're like and they didn't make it (laughs) you know like it's the i mean the idea is that the soldiers were killing them once they got to the bottom but you know, right. when you consider it being war and these guys just murdered all your friends, it makes sense why they would kill them back. You know, like, but the, yeah, the, course. the guy, Desmond, his, his, uh, personality, he's just like, I'm here to save anyone and everyone that I can. Just, just, just yeah, like, yeah. you know, God loves everyone the same. Yeah. And so that is how I'm going to see them as well. Even if you're trying to kill me, I'm going to save you. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's a great movie. I think there are a lot of, uh, CGI type stuff that make it worse. I think there's a lot of restrictions cause it, it, it feels like I could be wrong, but it feels like everything was shot on a soundstage, you know, like I'm sure most of it how was, yeah. compact all the fight scenes felt like there's a few times where people were just in a line, like just like six guys and they just get shot down from left to right and they just fall down. Oh, you yeah, know, that happens a few times. And, uh, it just, yeah. it, that just stands out so much because it, it feels so tight, like so claustrophobic. Right. But, um, what did you, what do you think about the, uh, his dad? Uh, in what way? I thought he did a good job. As the actor, just, yeah, I, I mean, just in general, I thought it's very compelling because they introduce him as uh, obviously like a war veteran who's an alcoholic yeah. and more than likely has PTSD and he's abusive um, and he's just overall probably not a good dad. Yeah. Um, but then as we see later on, he goes out of his way to try and help his son, like, like. Uh, the way I see it is he's probably not been a a great dad and but I think he knows that and I think they go to show like this is what happens when people go to war. Like the ones who didn't die, you know, they came back really messed yeah. up and it's there was no support, you know, like for, for anyone back then. And a lot of it just kind of that was just the life, like that's just how they were. I don't know. And it's, 
Yeah. I, I think it, 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 it shows that, yeah, he's, you know, he, he wasn't, a, like I said, he wasn't a great dad, but he, I think he's pretty self aware of it and he doesn't like yeah. it and he tries to fix it. Yeah. I think, you know, the best he I can. I thought they did a great job on showing that, like, how much it meant to, uh, Desmond's character, or to Desmond, to Andrew Garfield's character. When he showed up at the court martial mm-hmm. hearing, like you yeah. could just see it, and it on yeah. his face, like, "Wow, you know, my dad is here to help me." You know, it was just like it was a really good moment in the movie. Yeah, because he'd probably not experienced that kind of support from his dad ever, yeah. ever. Because his dad was very upset when him and his brother both enlisted, just yeah. because, and again, because he not because. Of any reason other than he knows that either they will die or they'll come back as a different person. Well, he says he's and like, they're going to lose friends and, and, and well, all that. He says he's like, well, hopefully you get shot in the front. Like, that's the only thing I can hope for you is that when you get shot, you get shot in the front. Cause if you get shot in the back, yeah, like much. my, I, I assume it was his brother. I don't know what it said. Um, the dad's brother, but he's like, he got shot in the back. And it pushes all your guts and everything out through your front. And it is a terrible, terrible way to do Oh. And it was yeah. like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was his reality of his sons joining war. It's not like, oh, you're yeah. going to go and be this hero and serve our country. It's like, you're you're, you're going to go and you die. You are going to die. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my only... The only comfort I have is that your death will be fast. And like, what a terrible terrible like yeah. not terrible and like I, i'm trying to figure out how to say this like just a terrible just a, a, place a, to a be outlook. you know yeah like yeah. how sad and scary must that be to watch your kids go off into certain yeah. death like what you assume is certain death that your only hope is that their death is quick not that they come back not that they survive but the best outcome you can imagine is their death is quick and painless yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but so while I was watching this movie, I was taking a bunch of notes and I was sending them to you. Yeah. And, uh, so generally if I take notes at there, 3 a.m. at yeah, it was 3 a.m. for you, but, uh, it was late for me here. It was like, I think I watched it between 6 and 8 p.m. here. Uh, uh-huh. but generally when I take notes, I just write down enough that will remind me what was going on, but they, I don't yeah. think they're very coherent if you don't have my brain. <laughs> so I, oh, I was yeah. wondering if there's anything that stood out to you in any of the notes that I had sent. Um, let me pull it open. Hold on. While you're doing that, I, wanna, I wanted to tell a story. It was one of the things. <clears throat> so there's one scene where Desmond falls asleep and imagines getting uh stabbed by the Japanese, getting bayoneted, and he like wakes up in a panic. Yeah. Um I'm yeah. sure I've told you, I don't know if I've told the story on the podcast, but my grandfather was in Vietnam. Your grandpa? Yeah. He's in the Vietnam yeah. War and uh he sleepwalks and one night sleptwalk <laughs> out of his out of his bunk, out of the safe area, and woke up inside of like this tanglement of barbed wire and he was like just Jeez. outside of where he's supposed to be where the enemy could be so not only is he in a bad area where the enemy could find him he's also yeah if it's at it's in the middle of the night so if he sneaks back in and they see him they're just gonna shoot you know they're just they're not gonna like yeah where check was his paperwork, <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. And so who was on watch? Well, that, that's what he's always wondered. So he, he does end up, he, my grandfather does. <laughs> he's still looking for the guy. <laughs> he sneaks back in and no one ever found him. No one ever said anything. But my grandfather's question has always been like, I don't know if they watched me walk out and were confused. And then I just turned around and went back in. So the guy on watch yeah. knew everything that was happening or he just got out and got back in. And he's just like, and that is so scary because that is not supposed right. to happen. 
No one should be able to get out and no, no one should be able to get back in for sure. But he did both. How long, how long do you think it took him from the moment that he like woke up, you know, like to, to process where he was and what was happening? Oh, I, cause, especially because it, if it's dark, you know, and there's probably not a lot of light out there, it's like very disorienting. So do you I, even remember you're in Vietnam? Like that's gotta be crazy. Yeah. So I, I sleepwalk as well. I assume it's whatever, whatever happens to my grandfather, I'm, I'm, I assume it's the same thing. And I know with me, yeah. like there was one time where I thought a snake was in the bed with me and my wife. And so I grabbed the blankets yeah. and I rolled them up like a giant burrito. Like I just spun it as fast as I could yeah. to try to contain the snake. And my wife started yeah. yelling at me because it's in the middle of the night and I just ripped the blankets off of her. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, there's a snake in the bed. There's a snake in the bed. And she's like, there's not a snake in the bed. And I was like, so confident. But what if there was? Exactly. Yeah. But you know, I'm so confident that there's a snake in the bed that like when you, when that happens, when that, when your dream becomes reality, you don't just wake up. You're not like, Oh, that spaghetti monster isn't real. You're, you're, it's, you're half awake, half asleep. And so everything yeah. feels like it's actually happening. So I would imagine depending on what was going on with my grandfather in his dream that it took him a while yeah. to like, Okay. To, to realize yeah, like, what happened. Let everything set in. That would be, it would be terrifying. So I, uh, yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I have, I have a similar story, uh, less Vietnam, more along the lines of yours. <laughs> Years ago, like when me and Crystal first got married, yeah. uh, I had stayed up late. It was the night before Halloween and I was like working on a Halloween costume and she'd already gone to bed. And then I'd say I late, so it's like one in the morning. And then I was like, "All right, I'm going to bed," but I don't, I don't really remember laying down and going to bed. I just remember, I wh- what I remember was I, I started getting to bed, and then all of a sudden I see a tarantula crawl across my pillow. Right, <laughs> so I start freaking out because I I'm not a fan of spiders. I'm like tarantula, tarantula, get up! And I was like yelling at Chris. I was like, "Get up, get up, get up!" So she's like freaking out. She's like, "What? What?" I'm like. I was like, there's a trench. I was like, we got to catch it. So I'm like running around my room, like looking for something to catch this thing in. And she's like, where, where is it? What are you talking about? And, I'm, and then like in the middle of looking for it, it like immediately hit me like that. I knew it wasn't real. I was like, oh, I was like, no, never mind. That was, uh, that was not real. And then I just went and like laid down and she's like, <laughs> what? She couldn't lay down. She was like still scared. She's like, well, is it real or not? Like now I'm scared can't find this tarantula that's crawling around our room it was uh quite an experience (laughs) so my especially because it literally was like a split second when and i was like oh no that wasn't real yeah all right i'm going to bed well my my grandfather again he's got i i have a lot of stories of sleepwalking but his stories are so much better than mine grandfather because uh he all his involved guns (laughs) he he was with uh He's sleeping, uh, it is after Vietnam and he's got his M16 in the closet and stuff. And, uh, my grandma's with him and he rolls over. He's like, Christy, someone's in the house. Don't move. I'm going to get my gun. Just, you know, just don't like, just don't do anything basically. And my grandma's like panicking, not moving, not sure what to do. And my grandfather just rolls back asleep. <laughs> he just lays back down and falls back asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandma's like, what, what is going on? And she was just panicked for so long before she realized he just fell back asleep. But, uh, That's oh crazy. man. But yeah, so did you pull up the list of stuff? Yes. Um, things that stood out, uh, your favorite line in any movie. Oh yeah. It was, uh, when the kids it? are, yeah, the kids are fighting in the very beginning and the wife walks out and she's like, Hey, why are you letting to the father? She's like, why are you letting him fight? He's like, oh, it's all right. Just let him go. It's a lot easier for me because I only have to whoop the winner. <laughs> it's just so, Yeah, it was very funny to me. Yeah, I, I do like that one. Uh, you say uh, Andrew Garfield has the creepiest I am in love face that you've ever seen. Yeah, don't you think? And you also asked if he had fake cheeks. <laughs> his Okay, his face looks so off in this movie. Did it not to you? Um, 
it didn't look off, but I do agree with the creepy, like, his longing stare. Yeah. It was very strange. Yeah, so. Or just like his, like, stare off in the distance, like, with his mouth kind of yeah, open. He, it was really he, weird. He meets the girl who becomes his wife, and she takes his blood, and he, like, falls in love with her, and he's at home, and he's just got this plastered on smile, and, uh, if it was natural, I think it would look less creepy, but because he has to act that way, it's just like, yeah. so forced. It's like, oh, I'm gonna kill you, but like smiling, you know? And he just looked yeah. very, very scary for the, that first half or the, before he gets to boot camp, he's a very uncomfortable character to watch. Once he gets into boot camp, he, yeah, he, he becomes more normal. I'm not gonna lie. He almost feels a little slow. Yeah. Maybe. That was my impression. Like, he's very innocent. Like, he seems like he was the one who got hit in the head with a brick. Yeah, like, like exactly. Like, he's got some damage. Yeah. Uh, um, let's see. You asked which war this was, but you already figured yeah. that out. Which war his dad was in. Did you figure that one out? No. Was it one? They said it's the Great War uniform, right? That's So it must be World War One. Yeah, that's World War One. Yeah. Um, throwing a knife at each other's shoes reminds me of the time we were throwing bamboo at each other. Yeah, you remember that? Oh, yeah. At my grandma's house? There there were a couple where they were just like these hard thuds. <laughs> I had bruises. So we, we were about 20 feet apart, and there's this real thin, it's probably... I don't know, a quarter inch dowel, but a bamboo. So there's like a small stick. Yeah. That would, that would be like comparable to an arrow, maybe slightly bigger than an arrow shaft, but it was about four or five feet long. And we were just throwing them. End. Yeah. Throwing them like a spear. And the goal was to not move your body and to catch it before it hit you. And so we were yeah. trying to catch it before it hit us in the chest. And, uh, sometimes we didn't do it very well and just got hit straight in the chest and it felt like getting shot with a paintball gun. Yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. It was like, if it, if it came down kind of at like an angle, then it wasn't so bad, but there were some that hit you flat, like head on. Those hurt. (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. It, it was a, it was a a dull thud. We were so bored when we were kids because we were like 12. And then, like, oh, the the best thing we could come up with is just throwing stuff at each other. Oh, it was always involved something dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's like, did we not have anything better to do? And the answer is no. <laughs> That's what happens when you're homeschool. Yeah, or you there's just a not kid. a lot to do. Or yeah, that too. And there's bamboo around. So like, what are you not gonna throw it at someone? <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the line, how long have you been dead? Oh yeah. Uh, That's so a, yeah, Vince Vaughn, I that, that, that was really funny. <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite, uh, Vince Vaughn line. He, he's like, you're a weird looking yeah. guy. He's like, sir. He's like, how long have you been dead? <laughs> what did you think about Vince Vaughn in this movie? Um, I didn't have any problems with him. I thought he did fine. I, he felt, I don't know. Something like, felt so He said so he looked off. like an SNL character. Yeah, so like if SNL did a drill sergeant, I feel like it would be Vince Vaughn's character in that skit. Yeah, I could see that. Like if the if the drill if the drill sergeant was supposed to be the straight character, that is exactly yeah. would be the same. Like he would play it the exact <laughs> same way. Like I felt like he was doing a bad impression of uh what's his name? Ar- Arlie. Yeah. Arlie. Um, yeah, no, I, I know what you're saying. Let's see. You said, uh, let's see. Does the red cross on a helmet really deter people from shooting at it? Seems like it would be a target. Um, it's supposed to, it's technically it's supposed to be against like the Geneva convention, the Geneva convention that you don't shoot those guys. Now, whether people follow that or not, is probably not. So in the, the next that, scene, so that he shows up with all that stuff on, and that's when I wrote that down. The next scene, the other medics show up, and they're like, take that stuff off. That's a target. <laughs> I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, This one I didn't understand. You said, 
What is this? The <laughs> PS2 name? <laughs> the graphics look so terrible on the boat. The when the boat starts shooting the artillery, it looked like it was straight out of a PS2 oh. game. Like it, it looked a little uh, blurryish. Yeah, it was like um a PS2 version. Like, di- like I know what you're saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, that makes more sense now. <laughs> Uh, you said the the headshot was too comical. Yeah, you that, don't uh, care for that was the guy who, funny for you. Okay, <laughs> that was the guy who popped up and started screaming, and then got shot in the head. It just that whole that whole sequence was very strange. It felt very out of place. Yeah, it was weird. It was yeah. I don't think a human shield works against a rifle, but it might. Uh, well, according to MythBusters, it does not. It hardly works against handguns. Oh, really? Yeah. Does that matter at at distances though? Because I feel like the longer distance away, the 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 better off you are. Of <clears throat> yeah. Being stuck in the body. Yeah. I don't know, but no, I mean distance would definitely dictate. But I I feel like a rifle round is gonna be moving fast enough to it not really matter. I don't think I don't yeah, think a human probably. shield is really that effective. No, I think it was just something unique that they threw in there. Yeah. Also, it was his own guy, wasn't it? That seemed kind of... I don't know if it was like, this is yeah, just the he atrocity. Dead. He was War. only half a body. Yeah. No, oh, I, yeah, I, sure. I I know it wasn't his actual, like a, a guy who was alive, but uh I don't know. It just seemed... It seemed strange. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Then you said, was that Joshua? Who didn't want to help the guy who lost his legs? Yeah. Was it? That I don't understand. I, <laughs> your brother. Uh, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure the guy looked like your brother. Are you asking if he was in World War II or if he was in the movie Hacksaw Ridge? If this guy the was playing, yes to both. <laughs> playing your brother, if he got inspiration from your brother. Because the guy looked like your brother who was like, don't save him, don't worry about him. And he acted just like your brother. Oh, yes. <laughs> my, my brother who just, he likes to let people die. We've seen it many times. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's time to accept the green screen as a technology is not cutting it anymore. We talked about that yeah. and agree. Uh, I, okay, it's really so getting I think bad. I know what you're saying here. Yeah, but I think it's it's like what you said. It's it's like the rest of technology is catching up to it, so it it's, it doesn't look good anymore. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work the same way. Why it, blood in the screen? What a weird thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so that Are you that about was the blood splatter on the screen. Yeah, and they do that in quite a I, bit of movies. I hate I hate when they do that. Like they'll do it with blood, or they'll do it with water. Mm. Or dust. I'm like, that makes no, yeah, I'm like, that makes no sense. Cause now that just means, oh, hey, you're watching a movie. You're not there. Yeah. Or there's like, a camera a, there. It drives me nuts when they yeah, do that. Like, yeah, exactly. Cause it, it, especially this, this was really bad. Cause this was clearly digital. It's one thing if, yeah. say, a squib goes off and hits the camera. You know, that's, that's one thing. If it's like a, a something actually touches the lens. Unint- but when you go in and digitally yeah. add, blood splatter or something like that it's like okay well really like what's yeah i don't get it i've i've never liked it because it should the just disappear terrible through. invention yeah yeah it should go past you it yeah. should go behind you uh yeah flamethrowers are a terrible invention has to be one of the worst ways today <laughs> is that what i wrote uh i meant to die <laughs> but also today uh yeah, the flamethrowers are is terrible. It's the worst way today. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's like if, brutal. If you were to choose getting shot to death or getting blasted with a flamethrower, oh, one, shot, shot yeah. every time. Yeah. What if you were getting uh, shot with many flamethrowers? That would be quite painful, I think. <laughs> also, I wonder how every to be a Japanese what. <laughs> Sorry. Every movie that has, I'm not reading has this a one. guy. Every movie that has a guy uh-huh. with a flamethrower 
as soon as he pops up, we'll like, get shot in the back and explode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's for sure. I even said that too. I was like, I was like, watch, this guy's gonna get shot in the back, and then boom, he does. It's it, basically it, it does every time a red shirt from Star Trek. That's a, it's the same thing. In a I movie. wonder. I wonder if that means like since they pretty much put it in any movie with the flamethrower, if it was actually just super common. In the war, if that happened so much that like it would be unrealistic for someone to not get shot in the back, maybe in a movie. I mean, they stopped using them. I I think the Geneva Convention might have stopped it. I don't know. I don't remember. Who's... I want to say we use them. Um, I want to say they were still used Vietnam, but that maybe. might not be true. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but the um. They're, they seem very impractical. Um, well, they're really good for clearing out bunkers. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't use it for like open battlefield but do you think, fighting. You know, but do you think for of, clearing bunkers and trenches? I would say it's effective. But is it more effective than a grenade? Um. Uh, maybe. Or even like I don't know, an incendiary I mean, grenade or something like that, like. That might be more effective, but I don't know if those are even around yet. Yeah, well, I'm know. sure they are. I don't know. Because, like, you have a this giant pack that you have to carry around, and you don't really have a gun because you're carrying a flamethrower. So you don't have range, right? And then you have to get up. You have to – to clear a bunker, you have to be on the front lines, and it just seems – yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a very practical weapon, which I, I assume is not because we don't use them really anymore, so – until Elon Musk. Yeah, Have you seen all that? Not. The Born companies coming out with oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> flamethrowers. His flamethrower? Yeah. That dude's wacky, man. He's so funny. Um, <clears throat> what, you didn't want to read about the Japanese soldiers? Oh, no. I tried three oh, times. Just to I thought you I thought it was a principal what, thing. Oh my You're gosh. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read about I, Japanese. I'm not stuff. saying this racistness. <laughs> so I was wondering uh, I if you're an uh, oh American gosh. Japanese I'm done. actor. I'm done. Call if, if, uh, it, how, how would it be portraying the Japanese soldiers from World War II? The Japanese soldier? Yeah. I've always it, wondered that. This, like, well, in any war type movie, how it feels to be like okay, how does it to be like a German soldier, you know, at, in in a in the Holocaust? Yeah. Like, is it? I, yeah, I don't know. I've always wondered that. Yeah, I don't know if it's like because it's got to be different than portraying just a a villain, right? Like a fictitious, fati- f- uh, fake. <laughs> Let's go fake. Fictitious. Playing a fake villain, like it doesn't. That wouldn't fictitious. really be fictitious. Fictitious. Uh, wouldn't really affect you, but when you're playing real life villains, that's yeah, gotta be much that harder. Happened. Oh yeah. Did you see Twelve Strong? Um, no. Oh, you didn't see it. Not yet. No. Uh, okay. Let's see. Get blown up, tied up, and kicked off a mountain. That dude is having a rough day. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was a, I think the first guy he saved, he was like all singed up. Yeah, and he, I, yeah I know. I was, I was yeah, I, when he took him to the edge of the, the cliff, and he's kind of trying to figure out how to lower him down. Yeah. And then he, he ties him up, and I was, I was telling Chris, I was like, I imagined it would be like, um, the scene in Toy Story where Woody lands on, or gets in the back of the moving truck and gets RC, and he sets him on the edge and then just kicks him off to go save yeah. Buzz. He's like, and there you go. Like, I, do you think uh, it didn't? It didn't happen. If like you're that. that guy, right, and uh, you're dying on the battlefield, and a, a medic comes up and saves you, and carries you to safety, and then ties you up and kicks you off a cliff. Are you more or less scared <laughs> than when you were just laying on the battlefield by yourself? Like, please, please just leave me here for them to come and stab me. <laughs> like, what do you think is scarier? Like, obviously, it, it paid off, right? They all, like, a lot of them survived from it. But, uh, yeah, I just, it would be, that would be terrifying because you would have no control 
most likely because you your yeah, body you just have to let it happen all blown up you know yeah that would be pretty scary and it's a weird is a such a weird battle that the ridge that the mountain cliff the face the mountain face uh separated both armies yeah. so really the distance between the two of them is not that far right like at least the no, americans really to the face of the cliff is like a few hundred yards it seemed like um maybe it was further than that so so here's a question that i have and and i don't know if they explained this and i missed it or not why send the guys up there at all if you have the artillery why not just bomb the the place out uh well the japanese were underground and and then send your full force up there i oh that's i think that's what would happen i think they would bombard it and then they'd go up and try to take it and then the japanese would hit them with full force later on. Yeah. Because I, I think art- artillery yeah, was sense. pretty ineffective against the Japanese in this war because they had so many tunnels, similar to Vietnam. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, that's all I got. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a good movie. I think it's uh, definitely worth watching. Overall, great movie. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's that disturbing uh, when it comes to... Uh, the the violence and stuff like that. But if uh, you guys enjoy, no, not if you've seen any other war movie. Yeah, if you guys enjoy our podcast and you want to help us out, you can go to our Patreon. Um, and if you vote for Taylor or Alan, you can help decide who has to pay the punishment for that month. And you also get all our episodes two weeks vote in for advance. Taylor. And uh, we just want to say thank you to Boss Play it's- for sponsoring our show. <laughs>